Yeah, thank you for the kind introduction, Mr. Chairman. And uh, yeah, uh, today I'd like to you, I'd like to speak to you about this uh, application of CFD techniques to study the flow uh, in uh, in the aorta, in the aortic heart. Aorta is the largest uh, artery in uh, the human body. Provides uh, oxygen to um, organs and tissues. And so understanding the mechanism of development of aorta disease is critical for medicis, medicians, for uh, clinic, many clinical reasons to avoid disease, uh, to help um, medicians in, um, uh, in predicting uh, uh, disease. This, it is something that uh, I can use this one, I think. No, OK, I can do with the mouse. Uh, it was done um, already in, in the 15th century by uh, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, who studied the vortices uh, in the Arctic route. And then we have also today uh, diagnostic techniques uh, which are uh, investigate this, this flow, the flow in the Arctic uh, uh, arc. But let's go a little bit uh, uh, more in the details on what means to simulate um, uh, the flow in any cardiovascular vessel. Here, I re uh, in the top of this slide, I reported I, a general uh, vessel, uh, cardiovascular vessel, uh, where we have, it could be an, arteri uh, an arteria or a vein. Well, we usually have, uh, as inlet, uh, velocity, a flow rate, a blood flow rate, which is imposed. While on the outlet, yeah, things are, are a little bit more difficult, uh, as I will show you in a few seconds. For sure, the, uh, the blood is a liquid, yeah, obvious, so it is a, an incompressible flow. A little bit more uh, uh, tricky is to uh, choose the viscosity model. Yeah, obviously, uh, the blood is not uh, a Newtonian fluid. But in some large vessels, like the aorta, we can consider uh, it as, um, as a Newtonian fluid. And so this is simplifies things uh, a lot. And this is the case, obviously, of the aorta, where the velocities and the size of the vessel, uh, of, um, of the, vessel the diameter is um, so is not so small, and so we can consider uh, blood as a Newtonian fluid. Boundary condition, this is the, m the most tricky part. Yeah, in, as input, as I mentioned, we have um, um, flow rate, which actually is uh, not a continuous flow rate, but it's pulsatile. So because uh, we have to replicate the heartbeat, and so we have to put uh, temporal, uh, tem time dependent uh, velocity condition at the inlet. Yeah, pressure is zero gradient at the inlet, as well as velocity, velocity at the outlet. Let's talk, uh, let's skip for a second the pressure and then let's talk about the walls. The walls we have to uh, resolve or model, uh, whatever you want, the, um, the boundary layer. Otherwise, we cannot, we cannot compute the wall shear stress, which we are interested because from the wall shear stress depends the um, yeah, the the st the stress on the on the on the, on the on the tissues of the of the vessel, and so the probability of uh, of having uh, problems, disease, and uh, leakage of of obviously of of blood. Yeah, about pressure outlets, this is something uh, that uh, it's a problem. Because we don't know actually the pressure at uh, a generic sec section where we uh, cut our integration domain, uh, and so we have to make we, to make some assumption. Yeah, the simplest one is obviously to put a fixed value. Yeah, we, we say that okay, we have zero pressure at the outlet, um, but it's uh, it's yeah, it's uh, simply we can use it. Uh, very easily, but it's not realistic since we are not considering the, the dynamics of the cardiovascular system. The pulsatile flow, 
the flow back and flow, um, reverse flow and things like that. So we have um, a great model, which is the Windcastle model, which uh, relies on an electrical analogy to a, an RC circuit. Uh, and where we have these two resistances, uh, the proximal and the distal resistance, and we have a capacitor. Uh, the, the three of these elements in somehow uh, represents uh, the hydraulic characteristics of the downstream cardiovascular system of what of the of the piece we are considering in our case the aortic arc and so we have an equation like the one you have on the bottom side of this slide it's a differential equation and if we manage to uh, define rd rp and c we can compute the those that pressure uh, that depends on time and that that gives us a uh, quite quite really quite realistic behavior of the cardiovascular system but yeah obviously the uh, defining our drp and c uh, as you may already know is something that it's very tricky uh, yeah actually we put uh, this windcastle three parameter model which is as you as you so it's a lump parameter models in a so open foam solver which is pimple wk foam so it's based obviously on pimple foam um, and uh, we applied it to study uh, flow in the in a, in a sane and an aneurysmatic aorta the aneurysm is that enlargement on the descending the, the aortic aorta so it's uh, on the left aorta the left uh, side and uh, yeah uh, obviously we use the three different le level grids to approach um, a numerical uncertainty a numerical uh, and convergence of the simulation following roach uh, theory we use the snappy x mesh to compute the grid uh, we inflate the boundary layer with the orthogonal cells we perform the attached entity simulation, viscosity is constant, since we are considering uh, uh, the blood as a Newtonian fluid, density, yeah, obviously, obviously we have an incompressible flow, so it's just uh, a parameter to, to have post, to post-process results. Yeah, first thing, yeah, it's uh, to set up uh, the boundary condition, and the, yeah, mainly the boundary conditions, you have the velocity profile measured uh, for the two patients, the one, uh, the Sena aorta and, the, and for the aneurysmatic aorta. Wall, we have no slip, boundary layer modeled with the classical open foam wall function for uh, at the attached at the simulation model. And yeah, for the outlet, we applied obviously the wing castle. Yeah, and uh, on the right hand side, you have the parameters we used that uh, yeah in this case we obtain them uh, uh, relying on literature values and trying to uh, make an op optimization there's a, 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 a lot to do to um, to actually um, find um, um, a relevant way um, a, a, a improved way to define this parameter. We use the literature uh, value at the end. Uh, and initially, we uh, saw uh, plot the, uh, uh, the velocity and the absolute pressure on the uh, aorta path line, which is basically the, um, the line which uh, can be drawn uh, at the center of each one of the sections of the aorta you can see on the right hand side and uh, as you can see the uncertainty is very is very low so we are we are so we are better solving things um, we assessed the grid convergence index the order of convergence and also the less quality i should say desk quality 
And uh, as you can see, following this um, method developed by Dimash and others, um, the ratio of the modulated turbulent kinetic energy to the overall kinetic energy is less than uh, the 30%, so we are in uh, the POP criterion. And so the uh, less quality is it's good. It's good. And uh, let's let's talk a little bit on or let's look a little bit more in the in the details of the results. This is uh, a velocity and pressure fields during an art beat for the early C stall, peak C stall, and late C stall. Uh, yeah, obviously uh, you can look uh, you can see how the peak of pressure travels from the ascending the aortic root uh, to the um, top of the aorta where we have the bifurcation to the subclavian carotid and so on and then it moves to the descending aorta during the late systole. Uh, the most interesting thing is the fact that uh, with the proper setting of the Wingassel model we are able to match the values usually measured with the uh, a magnetic res induced resonance or other diagnostic techniques, both in terms of velocities, which are on the speaking in terms of uh, um, meters, seconds, and pascals, rather than millimeters of mercury. So, uh, for the velocity, we have an order of magnitude, which are the, of the one meter per second, and pressures uh, which change of. Uh, like 700 uh, Pascal. Now, and this is something that if you uh, consider a um, induced uh, magnetic resonance, you will see that you will get something very similar. Uh, the values are th this one. We didn't do a direct comparison. Why? Because uh, each aorta is a, is a, is a, has a different story, no? because each aorta belongs to a different person who has different uh, biological values and so you you cannot uh, direct you have to compare the measurement of this single the single patient you are studying and we unfortunately don't have this this measure for the geometries for the patient to be an analyzed and those are instead uh, a comparison, comparisons of the velocity streamlines for the normal and the aorismatic aorta. As you can see, for the normal aorta, the flow is almost uh, laminar, very regular, smooth. While for the aorismatic aorta, we can see how we have some uh, chaotic uh, flows flow in the enlargement in the descending aorta. The flow becomes uh, not regular, turbulent. We have definitely. Uh, a vortex, and we can uh, look at it. it. Should I don't know why it's not playing? Let it's only playing on the left hand side. Uh, you can appreciate how. Um, let me try to. Okay, uh, you can appreciate uh, first of all the dynamics of the of the of the flow, and um, yeah, that, that depends on the Winkessel model. And uh, also, uh, I would say uh, we are uh, we just see um, a fixed image, but uh, that's the way it is. I I'm. I cannot start the video. Yeah, but it's okay. Um, on the on the right hand side, instead you you can uh, look at uh, the enlargement zone where we where we have uh, a strong vorticity. Both of them are vorticity plots in the enlargement zone, and this is a consequence obviously of the <coughs> of the um, of of the fact that the, 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 there is a, a this enlargement. And this vortex uh, uh, brings to a recirculation zone. Blood uh, remains in that zone, and it can deposit uh, on the surfaces of, of the vessel, and it, it can bring to um, uh, disease. Uh, yeah. 
uh, last set of results regards uh, a comparison of pressure and wall shear stress during the peaks uh, of the cyst uh, the peak systole of uh, an earth beat and as you can see from um, uh, com from the pressure comparison the aneurysmatic aorta has a, a important uh, um, pressure the pressure the pressurization zone low pressure zone at the center of the vortex on the on the aneurysma, uh, which is obviously a consequence of the presence of the uh, of the turbulent flow and then a rotating vortex, while we don't have this one uh, for the normal aorta. It's about the wall shear stress, which is something very important for medicians for for, a, for from a po clinical point of view. You can see how for the aneurysmatic aorta, the wall shear stress level is higher if compared to the normal aorta, especially where um, uh, there is uh, the um, there are the uh, subclavian uh, aorta, the carotid, uh, and 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 that and the, and the other uh, bifurc bifurcations. Uh, while for the enlargement, we have also another concentration of stress. So. Let me conclude my talk, uh, so which uh, deals with uh, the investigation of blood flow in a sane and an arithmetic aortic arc. Um, we developed this solver, which is pimple WK foam to include the Wincastle pressure bounding condition, which is uh, capable uh, after a proper setting of the, of the parameter of the Wincastle model to reproduce the fluid dynamic characteristic of the aortic flow and uh, but also of other uh, uh, cardiovascular flows blood velocity is about one meter per second and the pressure varies of five seven hundred pascal crossing the aorta with the aneurysm we have the transition from a laminar to a turbulent flows a cft simulation definitely allows to identify region with the high uh, wall, shear, wall shear stress level which can be uh, found uh, to be maximum in the enlarged zone, in the aorismatic zone. Thank you for your attention.